Hello, NE204, and welcome to week four, lecture one, where today we will discuss statistical models of spike train data. So again, what will we consider this week? We're going to build a simple, put that in quotes, statistical model of action potentials or spikes. And the model we're going to build is called a Poisson model. And we'll see that we can think of model, uh, spikes in this model as coin flips. So that's the idea of this Poisson model. Think of individual spikes as coin flips. And we'll dig into what that means this week. But first, let's remember the experimental data that will motivate our statistical model. Here we have our collaborator recording from an individual neuron under this green glowing light in the microscope. So this collaborator, this experimental collaborator, is able to patch and record from a single neuron. So for example, the recording may come from the hippocampus. Here is an illustration of that where we have this electrode, which if we look carefully here, we can hopefully see this very ghostly image of an electrode. It's a glass micropipette that's stuck into the brain tissue and pierces an individual neuron. And we can see the cell body of the neuron here in the hippocampus. So here we have our patched neuron that's going to generate the data that our collaborator observes. We also, uh, well last week we considered these data and we thought about a simplified representation of the spiking in these data. Remember that the observed spiking activity is very complicated. So here we have a plot of the voltage on the vertical axis versus time on the horizontal axis. So a plot of the voltage versus time of an individual neuron. And we see that this neuron generates lots of action potentials or spikes. And these spikes may vary in their the details of their shape. They may have uh, higher action potentials. Some of them are a little bit higher. Some of the spikes are a little bit lower. The interval between these spikes could have interesting voltage dynamics. Maybe they have slightly different shapes, which we can't make out here, but if we zoomed in, we might see it. So this voltage activity as a function of time recorded from a single neuron is very complicated. What we'd like to do and what we considered last week are ways to simplify these data. So we considered two abstract representations of spiking. We thought of, for example, indicating the time of individual spikes with tick marks. And we see examples of these tick marks here, where at each point in time we draw a tick mark if we see a spike, and if we don't see a spike, then we draw no tick marks. So this is one abstract way of representing these spike train data. Another way we can represent these data is a series of zeros and ones, where at each moment in time, perhaps in each one millisecond bin, we put a zero in that bin if no spike occurs, and put a one in that bin if a spike occurs. So we have these two abstract representations of spiking. Uh, as we go along in this class, we'll consider these voltage activities in more detail and start to, start to build more complicated models. But for now, we're abstracting the data we observed so we can start some data analysis and model building procedures. Also remember that the data is recorded in multiple trials. So a stimulus is delivered, for example, in trial one, and the spiking activity is recorded as a function of time. So we see in this first row, the voltage activity recorded as a function of time. Well, actually, in this case, not the voltage activity, but the spiking as a function of time. Remember, we've abstracted the voltage activity to get to this individual spiking. So the stimulus is delivered, spike times recorded. That's repeated in a second trial where the same stimulus is delivered, and the spiking activity is recorded here in the second trial, the third trial, and so on, all the way up to K trials. And in each of these trials, the duration of the recording is half a second, or 500 milliseconds. So we observe the spiking activity of this individual neuron for half a second. And what we focused on last week were ways to analyze these data. And we looked at a variety of techniques to analyze the spike train data we observe. And these included methods of characterizing the data, like the spike number histogram, the ISI histogram, and the rastogram. And we did this in lab last week, and you'll be doing this uh, in your assignment that's due this week. Looking at the spike number histogram, for example, notice the axes here. We have the thing that we observe, the number of spikes, and then the number of times or number of trials we see those spikes on the vertical axis. Well, for the ISI histogram, we have the quantity we're interested in, the ISIs in milliseconds, and then the number of times we observe that ISI. So we have graphical ways of looking at these spike train data. We can also plot things like the rastogram, which is shown here in the lower left of this figure, and other numeric summonies, which we discussed. And as a refresher, I'll ask you two questions in learning catalytics. So consider the following spike train. How many ISIs are there in this trial, and what is the firing rate of this trial? So please answer that on learning catalytics. Check your email for the session ID.